Welcome everybody, I'm Pastor Wayne Smith of Prosperity Christ Church, beautiful San Antonio, Texas. Hallelujah, amen. Right now we're going to blow the trumpet under the Lord here, so praise God. Let's do this. Maybe T likes this one. Thank you, Jesus. Uh -huh. Today, we're going to talk about what is the power of God. We need to find out what is the power of God. You know, we know God's powerful, but what is the power of God? What is the power of God? That's the question. And the Bible does tell us what the power of God is. In Romans 1.16, it explains it very clearly. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God. Amen. Unto salvation to everyone that believeth. Amen. So then he just gave that to us, didn't he? Mm -hmm. Unto salvation for everyone that believeth. He just gave that to us. God gave that to us in that message. And the word just said that the gospel is the power of God and who receives this power? Everyone who believes and receives the gospel of Christ unto salvation. So if we receive the gospel of Christ unto salvation, we have the power of God. Amen. Amen. When we receive Christ, we receive this measure of faith which is supercharged by the gospel of Christ which is the power of God. And this power is controlled by faith. Amen. Romans 12, 3 says, For I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according to what God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. Okay, let's talk about this a minute. He says, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly. Now, let me explain this to you. The first church's sign, and we talked about this in Bible study the other night, sign was tongues and healing, revelation. It was, it was, it was, it was what Jesus said we could do, cast out demons. It was, that was their sign, and if people didn't do this, they were real skeptical of it because there was a lot of persecution going on. They were literally hunting them down and killing them. So that was the signs. If you didn't do these things, they, they didn't consider you belong to Jesus. So what happened, so the, the miracles were the evidence of their faith. But what happened was, is people would come along and, and somebody wouldn't be walking. And you read about instances in the Bible where the, the apostles did this. But there was members in the church that did this too. And they would raise someone that's never walked in their life to walk. They do this two or three times and all of a sudden they go to their head. Okay? They think they're doing it because people start running at them like they were the reason. You remember? Like they were the purpose. Like Peter and John had at the, at the beautiful gate that day when the people were like worshiping. They're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. This is the power of Jesus. It's in us. They had to clarify their situation. So... So he's saying be sober because you got to realize that Romans was written specifically for believers in Christ. There's nothing in Romans written for the non-believer. It was written for the believers in Christ, and it was talking about the power that God had given everybody, okay? The power that we all have, and we have this day. We have that power. So he's explained not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according that God had dealt every man a measure of faith. So every person has this faith and God gave it to us. It's not about what we do, it's about what God does. Amen. Okay, so he's, that's what he's talking about here. 
So Romans was, it was written specifically for the believers in Christ. If you want a book that was written specifically for the believers in Christ, you read the book of Romans. It's a powerhouse of what God can do in the believer's life and what God should be doing in the believer's life. We need to get to where these, these, these miracles are commonplace in our life again. We need to get to where we have what we say. We need to get to where we, we have the gospel of Christ. We do what Christ said we can do Amen. in him. Now, according to Romans 12, God has given every believer the measure of faith. And why did he say this? Because every believer has, to, has access to the power to perform these miracles. The phrase measure of faith tells us something powerful about the Christian walk and how it applies to you personally. If you want your faith to grow and mature, if you desire to completely trust the word of God, you, you personally knowing that because of, of it, you can trust God to handle whatever difficulties life throws at you because God gave all people the power to speak prophecy to prophesy their own future with words. And we talked about this last week. Jesus says you can have what you say. Well, if you're going to say something that hasn't happened yet, that's a prophecy, right? Amen? And Jesus said you can have what you say. So we are all prophets. We all have the power of prophecy. We talked about that last week. And I can't say enough about how powerful that is. Whether illness, financial burden, unemployment, or whatever else comes your way. As a born-again believer, you have the ability to make this kind of faith in God a reality. Everyone is entitled to faith. Amen. So as Paul said, think of yourself soberly. Don't get involved thinking you're some higher level or some higher plateau of God than someone else because... Believe me, they'll have it. They'll, they'll mature their faith as soon as they want to. Amen. It's our job to lead them to that maturity. Amen. Now let's explore the measure of God's power, which is the measure of faith that you have been given. Remember that Romans 12 and the rest of the book of Romans wasn't written to unbelievers. An unbeliever cannot even possibly comprehend what Romans means. It was speaking only to Christian people, or at that time they called it the way, who had accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Amen. Therefore, when it talks about the measure of faith, it's not saying that everyone in the world has this faith. It's not saying that. What it's saying is that it's only available to believers in Christ. Amen. Now, 2 Thessalonians 3, 2 says, who doesn't have faith? And that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men, for not all have faith. Amen. The unreasonable and the wicked men spoken about in this verse is referring to unbelievers or specifically to deniers of the deity of Christ. They are the ones who don't have faith. So if you're wondering why your unsaved family member or friends can't understand your spiritual walk or is unable to stand with you in faith for your healing, your finances, etc., you need to understand it's because they have not yet received their measure of faith to understand faith. Amen. Salvation is required for that measure of faith to be present. And if they don't have it, they are not showing the symptoms of salvation. But you, on the other hand, have already received your measure of faith. Because Jesus is your true Lord and Savior. You are a new creation in Christ, therefore you have faith. One time I was thinking how the Bible is talking about Paul, you know, and how he was, I guess you could say, sinless. And I'm like, well, wait a minute, Lord, if you're telling, if you're saying, talking about Paul's life, 
and how believers are sinless. I said, what about Paul? I said, I said, you know, he killed people. He had people killed. And then the Lord told me in my spirit, that man was born again. Don't you tell me what he was. He's not that man anymore. He's a new creation in Christ. I'm like, okay, I understand. <laughs> Praise God. We are born again. We are a new creation in Christ. You got to let the trash go. Amen. You got to be who God says you are now, not who you was before Christ. Amen. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And that was Paul, right? He became new. Amen. Right? Behold, all things that become new includes the measure of faith that God has given you. People can seem religious but still don't have a measure of God, of the God kind of faith. The story in the Bible of Nicodemus who sought after and talked with Jesus was a very religious man. But he still didn't have the God kind of faith. He was looking for it, but he didn't have it. He was searching for it, but when he found it, he couldn't understand it. That's why he couldn't understand what Jesus was telling him that day. Religion is not salvation. Religion is politics, not salvation. This is what's happened to some of our churches. Look at the Methodist church, the Catholic church. Look at these things that they're, they're accepting now that are politically motivated. They're not, they're, not, they're not salvation motivated. Do you understand that? Some of the things that they're condoning. And it's, it's, it's tragic, it's sad. But I'm telling you right now, it's not, it's not salvation. It's not, it's not the gospel. And we got to be careful. I'm not saying that all Catholics and Methodists. I'm talking about a few of the churches of some of the. the there's going to be some Catholics in heaven. There's going to be plenty of Methodists in heaven. I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is we got to be careful what we're putting in our heads because just because some religious person that's that's highly respected says it doesn't mean it's the truth. It doesn't mean that they know the gospel. It doesn't mean they're part of the gospel. And it doesn't mean that they haven't turned from the gospel. Okay? Become deniers of the gospel. In John 3, 1 through 21, I'm going to read you the account of Nicodemus and Jesus here. Because there's a lot going on here. There was a man named Nicodemus, a Jewish religious leader who was a Pharisee. After dark one evening, now notice he came after dark. He wasn't going to do this during the daylight people could see. He came to speak with Jesus. <laughs> Rabbi, he said, we all know that God has sent you to teach us your miraculous signs are evidence that God is with you. Well, what Nicodemus didn't understand is that God was definitely with him because he was standing there next to him. Amen. Jesus replied, I tell you the truth, unless you're born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus says, what do you mean, exclaimed this Nicodemus, how can an old man go back into his mother's womb and be born again? And that's a good question. Jesus replied, I assure you, no one can enter the kingdom of heaven without being born of water and the spirit. That means you've got to be born. It says humans can reproduce only human life. He said you've got to be human. But the Holy Spirit gives birth to spiritual life. So don't be surprised when I say to you, you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it wants, just as you can hear the wind, but, but can't tell where it comes from or where it is going. You can't explain how people are born of the Spirit. Amen. Amen. Nicodemus goes, how are these things possible? Jesus replied, you are a respected Jewish teacher and yet you don't understand these things. I assured you, we tell you, what we know and have seen, and yet you won't believe our testimony. But if you don't believe me when I tell you about earthly things, how can you possibly believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ever gone to heaven and returned, but the Son of Man has come down from heaven. And as Moses was lifted up on the bronze snake on a pole in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up. He's, he's talking about the cross. So that everyone who believes in him will have eternal life. For God so loved the world, 
the world so much that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. God sent his son into the world not to judge the world but to save the world through him. There is no judgment against anyone who believes in him. And that's a big thing. It means God's not judging the believer. Amen. So you quit judging the believer. Amen? Amen. But anyone who does not believe in him has already been judged for not believing in God's one and only Son. And the judgment is based on this fact. God's light came into the world, but people love darkness more than light, for their actions were evil. All who do evil hate the light and refuse to go near it for fear, it for fear their sins will be exposed. But those who do what is right come to the light so others can see what they're doing, what God wants. Let's talk about that last verse. But those who do what is right come to light so others can see that they are doing what God wants. What is he saying? Our faith, our walk with God is our testimony to others. The miracles that God performs in our lives, the blessings, the favor, the love, the compassion, the faith that we know, the honor, everything that comes with belonging to Jesus is a testimony, and it is the light of the world. It's the our, our message of the gospel is the light to the world. Amen. Think about this. Here's the greatest teacher in all Israel, Nicodemus, yet he still didn't have the measure of faith. So he was blind to Jesus' teaching that day. He left more confused than when he came to Jesus for answers. This is what happens when a believer takes their faith to someone who they think is a real believer in Christ. Think about all the people that went to Nicodemus for spiritual advice. And it got them no closer to heaven than the, than the people that are going to hell. Do you understand? Because he didn't have the answer, did he? They will go to some highly respected religious leader as Israel went to Nicodemus and many other Pharisees, maybe even a pastor, and expect them to believe with them in faith for a situation. And then this respected leader becomes a faith killer and a faith stealer because they don't have the developed measure of faith that you do. So they say things like God doesn't do miracles anymore, God doesn't heal, or don't get your hopes up because you never know what God will do. We know exactly what God will do because God says exactly what he'll do in his word. Jesus says you can have what you say. That's your gift of prophecy into your life and you can have what you say. Amen. Amen. I spoke debt freedom from this debt six months ago and I had what I said, said six months later. And the reason they don't have this belief in Jesus is because they have never been taught correctly what belief in Jesus really is. They don't recognize the power of faith and what faith can do. Some of these types are harder to reach with the true gospel than some unknown tribe in the middle of the jungle somewhere. Someone that's never even, even seen, seen, seen anybody but their own people. Some lost tribe will receive Christ truth quicker than some of these, these case-hardened religious leaders. Because their hearts have been hardened against the true miracles working power of gospel. They don't even know that the gospel is the power of God. They don't even know this. It's the mystery. So be very careful who you believe with for your breakthrough. Because even though they look the part, it doesn't mean that they are the part of Christ that you are believing with. They have a corrupted religion, and you don't. And that, that's the issue. So they are dangerous to the believer and dangerous to the non-believer. We need to be so prosperous, so successful, so blessed, so favored with God, so happy, so joyful, that when people are outside looking in, they see Jesus. Amen. They want Jesus. They say Jesus never expected us to heal in his name or to multiply into our financial resources by faith. I'm like, really? But let's, let's look at what Jesus did in his ministry. He healed the sick. He raised the dead. He multiplied into a lot to feed thousands, right? He, 
He even got money out of a fish's mouth to pay taxes. I think that we need to do exactly what Jesus is doing. I believe that's exactly the ministry that he wanted to teach us. If he wanted to teach us something else, he wouldn't have done it. Amen. Believing God just like he did for our needs to be met, no matter what they are, is just the ministry he taught us. Everything that he needed up to feeding thousands with nothing, he believed his father for and he received it. Amen. Amen. And who is his father? He is our father. Jesus is our brother. Do you understand that? God is our father. Amen. It's just the ministry he taught us. He is our first example and he is our perfect example. We don't, you can't get better than perfect. There are not different kinds of faith depending on who you are in the body of Christ. You may look at someone who seems to have strong, world-changing faith and think, I'll never be like that person. I just don't have that kind of faith. That person is so confident, strong in their spiritual walk. I, they're just an, I admire them. I could never be like that person. Things just wouldn't change for me. Now, part of that testimony is pity. Okay, where's pity come from? Pride. But it is not the truth. The measure of faith is the same measure for every believer. It is the same faith that Jesus possessed. Different believers may have developed and strengthened their faith over time by the word at different levels. But their faith is no different than yours. It is the same measure of faith. Amen. You have the same capability as they do. Only you can build your faith. The measure of faith that is developed and strengthened in you comes from one place, the Word of God, heard, received, and spoken. Amen. In Romans 10, 17, it says, Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Amen. If you want to be a person who is confident and secure in your spiritual walk, someone who has strong, world-changing faith, then you must spend time reading, studying, and meditating on God's Word and speak it over and over. Amen. There's just something about when you speak the Word of God out of your own mouth Amen. that things change and things happen. Yes. Amen. It's the only way to receive this kind of faith that you desire. Amen. In addition to studying the Word yourself, you can listen to to mature believers teach you about faith and the word. And you can listen to previous sermons and teachings by this church on YouTube. We got hundreds of sermons on there. Mm -hmm. Brother Lupe used to listen to the word when he was driving a truck. That's what he listened to. Mm -hmm. He'd hear the sermons. Look it up. Look up Pastor Wayne Smith, Prosperity in Christ Church in San Antonio, Texas. You'll get hundreds of teachings. We have hundreds of teachings on the word of faith available to you. Turn that trash off your radios and put on some faith. Amen. Turn that trash off your TVs and put on some faith. Amen. It's there. These are important tools for immersing yourself in the Word of God and learning how to interpret and apply the Word correctly. In time, you will see that your faith is strengthened. There'll be that moment, we talked about it before, when it's like a light will come on and, and you'll take that card and you say, whoa, things just got different. Yes. Amen. Man, I just said something that's already happening. Hallelujah. <laughs> you will stir up the measure of faith in your life that are almost unconceivable today that you receive when you accept that Jesus is your Lord and Savior. You already have it. Amen. But you won't have received or achieved more faith, you will simply develop the faith that you were given at salvation. Amen. Never let anyone, even fellow believers, the enemy, or even your own mind, thoughts, or family convince you that you have weak or non-existent faith. You just have undeveloped faith. That's all. Because that's not the truth, according to the Word of God. Because if you believe this lie, it will keep you weak and as an ineffective Christian. And that's just what the enemy wants. Mm -hmm. The last thing he wants is a faith built up in a brother and sister that's world-changing faith. That's, that's the wrong kind of faith for him. He wants you to have faith in fear, not faith in God. Mm -hmm. If you have become a new creation in Christ and you have the power and measure of faith, 
given to you by God, just like Jesus. Your faith has the power to move any mountain. It just simply needs to be exercised. It's like strength training. You know, the more you lift weights, the stronger you get. Right now, make the quality decision to study the Word of God and then learn to apply it by watching Spirit-led people minister apply theirs and hearing the Word of God constantly. As you begin putting what you have learned into practice, your faith will become stirred up. Amen. You will then be amazed at just what the Lord can lead you to with the measure of faith that He's already given you. As we are learning today, the Word of God is alive and powerful, and the gospel is the power of God. When you speak the gospel of Jesus out of your mouth, you're speaking the power of God out of mouth, and you're not only stirring up your faith, you're stirring up someone else's faith. Amen. The Word of God says for us to hold the, the Word of God says for us to hold fast to our confession in Hebrews 10 23. Let us hold fast to our confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. Our confession is God's gift to us to be prophets of our own future. It's the gift of prophecy that we have by our confession, by what we say. Amen. The Word of God also says that the just shall live by faith. Romans 1.17 says, For in it is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as is written, the just shall live by faith. And how do we live from faith to faith? Not from doubt to faith or faith to doubt. It's from faith to faith. This means stay in faith no matter what comes at you. It doesn't matter how bad it looks, how negative it seems, how overcoming it comes on you, how damning it may look, no matter what the world says it's going to be or what your job says or what your neighbor says or what your family says or what the doctor says. You live from faith to faith. You don't go from faith to doubt. Because the just, the believer, you and I, lives by this standard only. We go from faith to faith. We never go from faith to doubt. Amen. And you know what Jesus said? You can have what you say. Amen. Did you hear this? You can have what you say. You can have what your confession is. You can have what you profess. Amen. Now you know what you are holding fast to. It's to your faith. It's to the gospel of Christ from faith to faith. What most people don't realize is that we are co-laborers with God. We are part of his workforce. We belong to God. We are not his pets. We are part of the answer, not part of the problem. We are part of the solution to the world's problems. And we do this by faith, not by chance. And maybe it's way bigger than that. It's us being part of the family of the Most High God. God does not want pets. He wants children who fully grown and able to talk their faith into their responsibilities in this spiritual world as well as this one. As, we, as He has given you His Word and what He will do if you will act on His faith by prophesying His Word into yours and to others' futures. What he will do is what Jesus says he will do. And that's everything that you need done. There's nothing God won't conquer or overcome for you. It's not bigger than God. God can make anybody write that letter. Amen. You understand? He can make the right person with the authority and the power to release that lien. To release that loan. To, to get the, he can make, to do whatever needs to be done. To say case closed. Amen. The releasing of the power. So how do you release the power? Proverbs 4, 20 through 22 explains it. My son, attend to my words, incline thine ears unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thy heart. For they are life unto those that find them and health to all their flesh. Amen. Amen. What is this saying? Out of your spirit come the forces of life. The force of faith is in there. And the channeling of it in a specific direction is what Jesus is telling us to do. When he's telling us we can hear, 
We can have what we say. If you say it, we can prophesy what we're going to have, what we're going to have in the future. I did a six-month-ago prophecy, and our future Friday materialized into reality. Amen. The Word is saying we must channel what we say in the direction we want to go. He's saying we are all prophets because we can have what we say. <clears throat> now that's power. Just like Elijah, Elisha and Elijah, they had what they said and so do we. Amen? Don't look at them like, well, those were powerful, mighty men of faith. You have the same faith they had, even greater, because you have something they didn't have. You have Jesus. Amen. You have the power of God, which is the gospel. Yes. What well, we need to understand is that the force of life that is in your spirit has a name, and that name is faith. Amen. The force of faith is the dominant force of the universe. The force of faith created the universe. And we had this power put in us when we received Jesus as our personal Savior. We can change things and we can help change people. We can reach people with the gospel. All we need to do is channel it into the direction that we want to go. It's time to prophesy the, prophecy, the gospel into our future because the gospel is the power of God. Amen. Matthew 17, 20 says, For surely I say unto you, if you have the faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, Move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. The power of God is the gospel of Christ. When you receive this gospel as your own, then no matter what anyone else says, nothing is impossible for you. Because Jesus said that you can have what you say, because his gospel is the power of God. We receive Jesus, we receive that power. Amen? Amen. If you don't know Jesus or just fallen away, please repeat these few powerful words after me. Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins. I ask you into my heart. I now make you my Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen.